The Lord just put us all through a patience test, didn't you? How'd you do? You did good? Amen. Amen. Listen, choir, I want to thank you for singing that beautiful song, Just a Sinner Saved by Grace. No doubt about it, we're all sinners, right? Just some of us are saved by grace, and some of us are still lost in our sin. We haven't received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior yet. But you know what? Those of you that are saved by grace this morning, you know, you think of yourself as a sinner saved by grace. You know what God calls you? He calls you a saint. Isn't that amazing? Have you ever thought of yourself as a saint? That's how God sees you today. I'm thinking about it in 1 Corinthians. You know how terrible that church was. I mean, man, they had some rough people at Corinth. You know, they were fighting and arguing and stuff like that all the time, doing stuff wrong. Listen to what God says about them. In verse 2 of chapter 1, Unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. They were called saints. You see, sometimes when we see an old rough piece of coal, God sees a diamond, doesn't he? In us. So I want you to leave here today thinking of yourself the way God thinks of you. As a saint of God. What an honor. What a privilege to be called a saint of God. We are in our study on the fruit of the Spirit. You know, we often think about goodness. But we often think about God's goodness. What about us? What about our goodness through the Holy Spirit? Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 again says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful for another opportunity, as we've already said, to gather in the house of God, Father, to worship you, to glorify your Son, Jesus, Father, to read your word, the very bread of life, God, the thing that fulfills us, Father, that washes us according to your word. So, Father, today as you wash us, Father, may we feel the cleansing as we study it together. Father, may we continue to grow in our faith. Father, may we continue to grow as you produce the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like I said, we talk about goodness all the time. We think about the goodness of God. But what about the goodness of us? What about that? Think, of, think about for a moment about the fruit of the Spirit and human failure. I mean, there's love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness we talked about or going to talk about today, that is, and all of the others. But y'all, these are higher standards than we can achieve on our own. And so the Holy Spirit produces them in us. Praise God. Amen? Praise God that He is at work. I mean, these are not the works of the Spirit, but they are the fruit of the Spirit. You see, salvation, y'all, is not reformation. It's not us reforming ourselves. It's not us trying to be better. It's not us changing, but rather salvation is regeneration. It's the supernatural act of the Holy Spirit that gives spiritual life to a person who was previously spiritually dead. The Holy Spirit moves in and has brought your spirit to life in you. It's regeneration. 
You see, changes in us, y'all, they're not due to imitation. Well, if I could just practice that and just do that over and over again. It's not due to imitation, but it's due to indwelling power that is inside you and me. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is doing good things in us. Amen? Amen. So, so let's just look this morning at recognizing goodness in our lives. Today, the fruit of the Spirit is goodness. When I thought about that, I thought about, first of all, about a good disposition. Can I ask you this morning, do you have a good disposition about yourself? Now, now this is different than a good mood. Okay, it's different than that because moods come and go, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Moods are changeable, like the weather. A good disposition is a part of your personality. But it's a lot more than an inherited trait. So what is it? Y'all, this is living consistent with God's love. It's an inerrant quality of mind and character. It's loving others as God loves us. Also, a, a good disposition makes us easy to live with. Uh-oh. <laughs> How about you? Are you easy to live with? You know, we also often hear that little saying, you know, I can't live with them, and I can't live without them, right? How about you today? Are you easy to live with? And you know what else? A good disposition makes us approachable every day. Now, not just sometimes, but it's a part of who you are. The Holy Spirit makes it a part of our nature. I ask you this morning. Are you the type of person that's approachable? Do, do you kind of understand what I'm talking about? You've seen people that just aren't approachable, right? Yes. Maybe it's a boss that has a closed door policy instead of an open door policy. Maybe it's somebody that... that you're just scared to go up and talk to them because you never know what kind of mood they're going to be in that day, right? They're just not very approachable. They don't have a good disposition about them. So a good disposition, what is it going to do? It's going to show love, joy. It's going to show peace, patience, and kindness. So I ask you this morning, are you allowing the Holy Spirit to produce a good disposition in you. Second, what about a good attitude? A good attitude. I mean, this is amiability. I mean, it's the quality of having a friendly and pleasant manner. You're just genial. You have a pleasant and a friendly manner about you. You see, a spirit-filled person is friendly. So how about it? Are you friendly? Or can you be sour and mean? I heard a guy not too long ago, he was talking about an incident, he was talking about uh, the, the situation and he was talking about a particular person and he said that's just the meanest man I've ever seen and people look at you what do they think sour and mean or are you a friendly person you see Jesus was quick to befriend the needy the Bible says he was a friend of even sinners. He, he was always reaching out to hurting ones. 
Do you? Do you reach out to those that are hurting? Are you looking for the best in people? That's what friendly people do. They look for the best in people. Not focusing on faults. And by the way, not complaining. Not slandering others. So how about it? Are you the complaining type? Or are you friendly? Do you need a better attitude? Do you need a better attitude at home? Do you need a better attitude at church? About church? Do you need a better attitude at work? I tell you who we can ask. What does your spouse say about your attitude at home? What do your kids say? One thing about kids, they're usually honest, aren't they? I've learned that from a fifth grade teacher. Kids will say anything about you parents at school. <laughs> They'll tell the truth. What about your coworkers? What do they say about you? about your attitude. The Holy Spirit wants to produce God's goodness in us, y'all. Not just a good disposition, but also a good attitude in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And we can also recognize goodness by asking, do you have a desire, thirdly, to do good? to others do you have a desire to do good to others so we're saved by grace through faith right we cannot earn our salvation we cannot earn heaven through our good works we have to remember that but listen good works are an evidence of new life in us the Bible says that we were created unto good works. Ephesians chapter 2 here. 8 and 9. For by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. Look at verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So, yes, we are created to do good works. And the Bible also says that faith without works is a dead faith. James chapter 2, look at it here. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Some people will look at that and they say, well, the Bible is contradicting itself. James is saying faith without works is dead. Paul is saying works has nothing to do with it, your salvation. But no, they actually agree with each other. Okay? What they are saying is simply this, that faith will produce good works. Okay? Good works are a result of our salvation, not a means of our salvation. If you are born again, you will do good works. It's a result of your salvation, not a means of your salvation. They actually agree with each other. See what James is saying. What he is saying, so faith without works is dead also. He's saying that if your faith does not produce good works in your life, you don't have the faith of the Bible. You've got some false faith. You don't have the faith of the Bible if it's not producing good works in your life because faith without works is dead also.
So I ask you, are you seizing opportunities to do good to others? Here are some good biblical examples of doing good to others. What about visiting the sick? Caring for widows. It's in the Bible to do good to others by caring for widows. By giving to the poor. Do you give to the poor? What about comforting those who are grieving? Do you take time to encourage other people that are maybe going through something and grieving? That's a good work. Or even, here's another one in the Bible, bearing one another's burdens. You see somebody going through a tough time, do you have compassion on them to get involved? To help them along the way. Bearing one another's burdens. So how about it? Do you have a desire to do good to others? Because the Holy Spirit wants to work that in your life and in my life. So today in closing, it's just time for a checkup. Checking your disposition. Are you easy to live with? Are you approachable? by other people. Checking your attitude this morning. Are you friendly? Not focusing on faults? Not complaining? How's your attitude? And checking your service for others. Are you seizing those opportunities? to do good to others. As we examine our own hearts this morning, as we take this time to do that checkup, ask yourself, if not, what changes need to be made? And so I ask this question in closing. Will you let the Holy Spirit make them? Because that's what he wants to do in your life. First, you have to let the Holy Spirit come in to you by accepting God's grace and receiving Christ's forgiveness and eternal life by placing your faith in Christ and him alone for salvation. And when you choose to believe by faith, the Holy Spirit will move in he will take residence in your life, in your heart, and He will regenerate your heart. He will begin to do His work of producing the fruit of the Spirit in you. So the question is, will you submit to His leading today? Will you do it today? Let's pray together. Father, we love you. God, we thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit. The work that only he can do in our lives. Father, you said that, um, Father, our righteousness is like filthy rags, Father. You said that our hearts were evil. But we thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit that is able to save us. He's able to regenerate us. He's able to draw us to Christ. And when we receive His grace, Your grace, Father, He moves in. And the Holy Spirit begins to do that work of regenerating our heart. Father, He begins to produce the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit in us. <clears throat> Father, one of, the, that, one of those that's part of the fruit is goodness. So, Father, we pray that through the Holy Spirit, 
as we submit to him, we begin to see that good disposition come about. We begin to see a good attitude in our minds and hearts. And Father, we begin to seize opportunities to do good to others. Father, may your goodness be shown through us by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.